Hey, what is going on YouTube? It is General Tariel, your coach of the Charlie Charizards, bringing you the APA Season 5 Playoff Draft Analysis. Now, first, I'd like to apologize for there not being a battle last week. Um, I did talk to Leo, or Six Foot Hacks, and the Durham Dredagons about our Week 12 match. And we were thinking about doing a meme battle because I'm good friends with Leo and everything. And um, when it came down to it, I was having finals. He was a little busy himself. And we realized that the battle didn't matter at all for playoffs. So he just opted to forfeit. It was better for both of us. Um, so I'm sorry you guys missed out on one like battle's worth of content. But it was just the best case scenario for us for just to do that. Um, not that it would have been terribly like a large, large amount of time to do it. But just with finals and everything, I felt like it was easier for me. So. But we did come into playoffs sitting at the fourth overall position in the league, which is very, very good. Uh, we finished 8-4, like I hoped. Um, of course, the last one being a uh, forfeit win, but nonetheless, we did very well the last few weeks, winning 4-0 um, two times in a row, and then I believe it was a 2 or 3-0 versus Mighty It might have been... Uh, it was a 2-0. 2-0. And then, of course, the technically a 3-0 forfeit versus Leo. So, don't tell Leo, but I'm 2-0 against him now. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> When it was coming down to the playoff draft, it was uh, really... I wouldn't, Actually, it wasn't honestly that difficult to know what I wanted because I drafted a lot of things, of course, over the span of uh, three drafts. That makes it 33 Pokemon that I've drafted. But it didn't seem that hard. Like, I just had favorites that I knew I wanted on the team that I did well with. It was just a matter of finding the synergy with the certain amount of Pokemon that I really wanted. Like, when it came down to Megas... I was just about only looking at Mega Charizard X. As good as Mega Heracross and Mega Venusaur was to me, um, Mega Charizard X is just really helpful, and the fact that I can get a dragon in my Mega compared to the other dragons I had where they'd be in different tiers and stuff, um, that's just extremely helpful. And even though I had good fire type, like an Arcanine and everything like that, I was still like, and Incineroar, I was just rather to fill those spots with some of the other very good tier 3 and tier 4s that you see on the screen. So it just fit me better to have Mega Charizard X on the team, even though I didn't do that well within the past three weeks, which is really unfortunate. It basically got one kill and died almost every game, which really upsets me. So hopefully I can change that around for playoffs because, once again, it's going to be an important factor to every team. Um, so before I like actually get into everything, um, I'm just going to look at it like here. I'm not going to do it like round by round like how you would a normal draft. This is me just composing the team as a whole. So even though this is um, every coach's kind of ideal thing when they're making a draft, um, since we're doing this all at once, there's no chance of us getting sniped. We weren't doing it round by round. This is just, you have what you have, just follow the rules uh, of the tiers. So I'm just going to do it all at once because I have to just talk about the synergy of them. I didn't really prioritize too much over another, I'd have to say. But, um... So going off of that, I'm going right back to Mega Charizard X. It just seemed like the best Mega Heracross. Mega Venusaur did a lot more for me this season than Mega Charizard X. I do have to agree on that. But once again, just the value of its typings and how strong of a Mega it is, period. Um, I feel like I should just really value it and use it in the playoff season. Because there is a lot of good times where um, Mega Charizard X can have such an amazing um, matchup and just sweep a team. And having very reliable Pokemon to help me do that such as um, Rose Raid support, which I which we've seen this season, Electrode as well for bulky waters, and then even to um, pressure more with just Lando T, and then that help versus like um, fairy types such as Registeel. All these Pokemon are very helpful to support Mega Charizard X. I have an amazing bulky water remover in Blastoise. Typically, it's always good to get like Blastoise or Starmie with Mega Charizard X or any Charizard form for that matter. Really, the only one other 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 one being Y, but. Um, <laughs> Still, they're just very valuable support, and when it came to Tier 1, it was a little bit more difficult, not too, too much. Um, Skarmory would have been helpful, but when I was looking at it, I'm like, Tier 1 for steals, not that best, not the greatest. When I got some, like, the three best steals in Draft League format, just about, um, with Skarmory, uh, Bronzong, and Registeel for all the drafts, and I knew I didn't really need Skarmory because I had two amazing Tier 4, st tier four Steel types. Like, there was no reason for me to go that high for a steel type. Yes, Skarmory is very reliable in what it does, but there's just insane tier ones that are much better that I can get stronger value of for this draft. Um, the first one that came to mind was, of course, Lando T. I know how well Lando T does with Mega Charizard X from my APA Season 3 team, if y'all know that one, along with Greninja support, which you already do see Greninja on the screen, but I'll get to him in a little bit. But Lando T, we all know what it does, and that's a lot of things. Once again, Bulky, Rocks, Scarf, um, dual Dance, just 
you can even run a choice band. I've seen that plenty of times before, just running a fly Z set is so helpful. Um, Rocky Helmet, Pokey, just Stealth Rocks, Defog, U Turn Momentum, it's literally all you need. Um, four times weakness to ice, not that bad, especially when I already have that solid pairing with Blastoise as well as Registeel and Mega Charger X laughs at ice types and just bops them. So looking at that, it's just extremely helpful. And I know Lando T can capitalize on the team because I've already had a scene similar to this before as a main core, as I've already mentioned. Um, knowing this and looking at the other tier ones, I don't need Dragonite because I already have Mega Charizard X. And I don't, once again, don't need Skarmory. And it was really coming down to a Terrakion or Mew for my tier ones. I don't believe I had any more on my th three rosters. Um, it was a little difficult because I really, really do appreciate a very strong fighting type. But after all that offense and everything, and just looking at Mew right there, Mew's one of the best Pokemon in Draft League format, along with Lando T. Lando T, Tapu Koko, Celesteela, Zygarde, um, and Mew. Those are all, like, top five, I think I mentioned. I think that was five. I can't count. Don't trust me. But um, Mew is just so versatile, because it literally knows so many moves. Because it's Mew. Duh. But that's all the more reason to have it on team. Plus, it's a really, really solid bulky Psychic if I just really need to run it that way. But just going into playoffs versus so many potential threats that I'm looking at when I'm looking at the teams that made playoffs, not sure what they're going to get. Because rosters won't, weren't revealed until all on the same day. We had to send them separately to Mydicus. So that way there was no um, counter drafts or anything of the sort. And um, luckily, Mew is just being able to deal with just about anything on a bench of a team. Yes, there's still some matchups where Mew probably won't be the best because I do have such amazing Pokemon in this team to where another Pokemon with a good set might just be better than any possible Mew set. But once again, Mew is just so versatile that you can bring it almost every week in a certain way. And with all the bulk that I have on this team, I am not forcing it to be a bulky Psychic, which is Stealth Rock Stallbreaker and stuff like that. Not forcing it at all. Um, I deal with Fightings pretty well with Lando T and Florges to where I don't have to pressure it to be a check to offensive fighting types. Um, which is very, very important because fighting types can just be way too much to handle sometimes. Honestly, it's the best offensive, um, fight or just offensive coverage period, like typing. I think fighting is, it's just really strong. So Mew and Lando T all like are just, we're easily kind of like the best ones. Tracheon, I just like wall breaking, but after having Mega Charizard X and Lando T along with having Greninja in mind, I felt like it was kind of overkill. <laughs> so Mew is definitely the route to go because it can't do anything for me just like Lando T. So, and uh, next up for tier two, I was really looking at uh, quite a few things actually. Um, I mainly kept in mind for the entirety of the season that since I have Needle Queen, I had Needle Queen on the team since the first draft. I have an amazing Tapu Koko check already for playoffs. Only one Tapu Koko made it to playoffs, and that one Tapu Koko is on Gator's team, who's on the opposite side of playoffs. So the only chance I face a Tapu Koko is in finals and i kept that in mind when i was looking at this i still love nido queen as a pokemon amazing stealth rocker spike toxic spike setter and just an offensive bulky pokemon as well it's literally one of the most reliable pokemon i've used in draft league format i love it so much um nido queen is much better than nido king if y'all say otherwise then you need to try out nido queen and use it correctly um don't try to use it like nido king but nido queen is whew, mama but Keeping that in mind with Coco, it's like, it's not as needed. I already have a very solid ground type in Lando T. Yes, Lando T is four times weak to the Hidden Power Ice that the Electro types can carry. But having, um, like, Electrode in the back, as well as just a bulky Mega Charizard X, an amazing Spit F in both Registeel and Florges, I ain't sweating it, Chief. <laughs> I don't need to worry about Nidoqueen. Oh, I mean, Florges was a tier two, so keep that out of mind right now. But it's like, I wasn't too really worried about that, like, looking at this. And when I was also looking at all the potential Tornadus that I have to face, I'm like, Needle Queen's still a decent check to that, but Florges is all, also really good. And I knew I wanted a Steel in Bronzong or Registeel, and after I got Mew, I basically knew I wanted Registeel, and I'll talk about it in a little bit, but I'm just getting to the point where that really makes Florges a really good option here. Because Wish Passing in the Registeel is so freaking good. Because just getting that HP all back into this fat Pokemon that only has to, that has to rely on like leftovers and just protect um, is just so much better. So much better. Just getting all that health back into that. I can even wish into Mew, wish into Lando, everything of the sort. It's just so much more reliable. And 
also gets defogged out with Mega Charizard X again. So already at the point of just like right here when I'm talking about Florges, I already have three defoggers in Lando Team U and Florges, which is insane. Um, technically four, because Mega Charizard X gets defog himself, but you don't want to run that. <laughs> so um, definitely, definitely like that so far. Um, but the toughest thing for me, the toughest thing was deciding between Greninja or Gengar. We all know what Greninja does, but we've all seen what I can do with Gengar. <laughs> so keeping that in mind, it was very tough, um, especially since I wasn't going Queen. I was like, I really still get a really solid Poison type if I opt to go Gengar, but I was also still looking at Roserade in Tier 3, but um, I know Gengar just absolutely wall breaks, but Greninja is just overall a more reliable Pokemon for a team. I love Gengar so much, and there's be a lot of few checks, honestly, for some teams if I opted to go with Gengar, but Greninja just with what it does is just so, so good. I will always value Greninja. It's just one of my favorite Pokemon now. Um, it just does what you need it to perfectly. It even has the option for the spikes, but just having the insane coverage it has, being able to tear a team down for a potential sweeper or just being cleanup duty, um, being a good Scarfer if you need it to, of course, just the simple specs, Life Orb Mix, an amazing Z-Move user as well because of its coverage, like I mentioned, and it's just speed tier is so damn solid. Like... When I was looking at the speed, I didn't really think I was going to be able to draft Jolteon here with this group. So I felt like getting the speed in Greninja would help me more than the speed in Gengar. Since I already have a few things in mind in the back, such as Alolan Persian. So, knowing that, Greninja just really helped out the team more as a whole. Even though I really value Gengar as a wall breaker. And one of the best tier 2s in my personal opinion. Um, I love Gengar, but I had to go with Gren because it just helps the team more. Um, whether I regret that or not, we'll have to see. That goes for all these Pokemon. But um, for a fact, I felt like Greninja was going to be best overall synergy for the team. Tier 3s. We had plenty, plenty of Tier 3s. Um, I'm pretty sure it was probably around 8 because you need 2 per draft. And I typically draft like a third one for about half of them. Um, I can't, I'm not going to be able to name them off, off the top of my head. So I'm honestly just going to go over the ones I picked and a few that I were um, considering at the time. So, when I was considering Nidoqueen, I was looking at Whimsicott, and that was before, of course, I decided on Floridus. Whimsicott just gave me Valuable Prankster to go along with the team. Um, I could still get Z-Memento if I really opted to do that. Um, Prankster's just always helpful versus anything you might have to face. Um, good speed tier, once again, at 116, just outspeeding the 115 speeds. Um, you're getting access, to, of course, to Moonblast and his stabs and Energy Ball, just being very strong hitting. Um, being able to get like the substitute Leech Seed annoying set is always helpful. Excuse me, Prankster Encore for the really scary um, potential setup and all that shit. But once again, just valuing Florges for that amazing Wish Pass and the Red Steel and everything else is just more important to me than Whimsicott's Prankster. So I valued that. And honestly, that was the only other tier 3 I was looking at. I did consider Jolteon, like I mentioned, but these two were just so important to the overall team that I had to go with them. It's like blatantly obvious, especially when my second best tier 5 was Electrode. So, Roserade and Blastoise. Blastoise, Bulky Water. Um, out of my Bulky Waters that I drafted, I knew I had Blastoise in the first draft. I had Vaporeon in the second and Swampert in the third. Um, Swampert, I was considering, but the hazard removal just to go with Mega Charizard X was the best. I wasn't really looking at um, Vaporeon, especially after I had Florges. Didn't seem that um, necessary. They're basically the same thing, just different typing. Um... No one can really disagree with that. Um, except for Porion gets a good ability on, like, Florges. Uh, Florges just needs a good ability, dude. It'd be such a more reliable Pokemon. Even though it already is, like, set in stone if it got a good, like, hidden ability in the next gen or something for some reason. We'd appreciate a game freak. But, um... Bulky Blastoise. Rapid Spin for Mega Charizard X is just so important. Especially since I have strong Hazard stack in the um, Greninja, the Rose Raid, and all my Stealth Rock Setters, Land of T, Mew, Registeel, Milk Tank, that I was kind of keeping in mind because Milk Tank was kind of an obvious tier 5 because um, I drafted it in the third round strictly for using in the playoffs. Um, just having my own solid hazards, being able 
to keep them on the field and just get rid of the opponent's hazards that they might put on my side of the field is so important. I don't normally always get spin because it is hard to pick up because there's only a few reliable spinners in my opinion. Like really good ones, some people just force themselves to draft spin and then they draft a kind of shitty Pokemon where there's another good Pokemon that's kind of a good value or just still helpful for the team. It's just the fact people draft, like try to force spin on a team. Defog is probably still the better option, but spin with this team is still very helpful. And just having, once again, multiple hazard removal options in playoffs is going to be key for me because um, I have a lot of momentum Pokemon on this team between Lando T, U Turn, Mew, Greninja, um, Parting Shot, Alolan Persian. I really have to um, try to avoid hazards, and of course, I have the four times a week at Mega Charizard X before Mega Evolution, and I'm trying to get Zardin and just hopefully win at one point for uh, just about most of these games, and I also have Volt Switch for Electrode. But um, just being able to get rid of hazards is just, once again, so key. Rose Raid. Like I mentioned in the third draft when I was drafting Mega Charizard X, just pairs so well. The spikes to uh, help just get the chip off on Pokemon where Charizard can potentially sweep. So, so good. Um, it's typing in grass and poison with its amazing offense, a special attack and one base 125. Um, allows it to really help the bulk, the defensive bulky waters and fairies that Charizard needs help breaking, which is so good because this also helps Greninja, who typically lacks against the bulky waters as well as potential bulky fairies if I don't really want to force gunk shot or just risk the 80% accurate move, for example, versus the Tapu Bulu. But, um... <laughs> Rose Raid's definitely just really good. One of my favorite Pokemon, once again, like top 10 for sure. I have a lot of Pokemon I love on this team, to be completely honest. It's just how I draft, and picking them in playoffs just made perfect sense to me. Um, I just value it so much. It can still be bulky. It really can. And just having like a potential spikes lead if they don't have good removal is still going to be good. I really how, like doubt anyone in playoffs is going to have sloppy removal, but it was just in case, you know. But once again, I affect it as I um, not affect it. I value it as a support Pokemon as well as a really nice offensive Pokemon and for like like Forb Technician or Choice Specs or something of the sort or like the Z Sunny Day um, that I wanted to bring that one time to where I get the speed boost and then I have the offensive like Fire Weather Ball. Like that's a really good sweeping option that I still hope to use one day because I wasn't able to use it that battle. But those tier threes were just so so solid for me million percent I was looking at it. Maybe I should have done the free points at the same time when I was going down the tier list. Man, eh, fuck it, dude. I did that so poorly. Kelly, don't be upset at me. But, um... Once again, they were just the best options for me. It just worked out that way. Tier 4. Once again, Registeel. Easy. Done. I needed that Steel type in Tier 4, whether it's Bronzong or Registeel. Even though Registeel is more passive and Bronzong does more, um, I didn't really want the double typing and Psychic. Not that it hurts me too much, but with me not having, um, like a fighting type or something of the sort, I really didn't want to be pressured by dark types too much. Um, as well as just, uh, Offensive Ghost can still do somewhat of a number to me. Um, even though I do have Meltank and stuff like that, but like, I knew for an ult for a uh, comparison ultra player who I face round one does not have an option of Gengar but I'll get back to ultras draft in a little bit don't worry about that once I'm done with everything here um so I was just looking at it I'm just like Registeel's just a better option like it's just still reliable stealth fox it gives me a bunch of amazing bulk um and it just does what it needs to do getting wish patch into it is still good but yes um Bronzong might be better overall because it is a steel with a ground immunity um, it does also give me Fireproof, just mix it up with better abilities than what Registeel has, but, I don't know. I just opted to go with Registeel. Whether or not I'm going to regret it, we'll have to see. I think Bronzong might have been a somewhat better option, but I just kind of trusted not having the double Psychic. I don't really think it hurt my team too much, but I just, in the long run, I felt like it wasn't that necessary. Um, because Registeel does what Bronzong does, just, um, it just doesn't have as great, like, offensive support. And other stuff later. I'm sorry if you see me like hitting stuff. Um, there was an ant on the desk or whatever. Um, so knowing that, I just have to go with Registeel. Perfectly fine by me. Next up, Alolan Persian for tier 4. Um, with my free points. or Yeah, because technically I made a Registeel in my tier 4. It's not like it matters. Everything fit perfectly. Um, parting Shot. Parting Shot, Parting Shot, Parting Shot. Once again, momentum is so good for this team. And also... Um, just being able to support the setup in Mega Charizard X, Lando T, 
Mew. So, so good. Even Calmine Forges, because I do love me a Calmine Forges, don't get me wrong. But, um, they just help out the team so much that Parting Shot is just too useful. Even then, a Lone Persian is still like a potential Pokemon just to do damage to the overall team. Um, because the Technician with a nasty plot and stuff like that is potential sweeper, a million percent. Some people slack on it. Um, giving me, what is it? Foul play is helpful for like offensive sweepers. A fast taunt user is really, really good. I really appreciate that Pokemon. Um, getting the fur coat allows it to be more bulky and more supportive. Always helpful. Um, and I just kind of wanted another dark type to go along with Greninja. Two darks you can't really go wrong with, especially when you have Mew, Florges, and Lando T to help versus fighting types. Very, very free, dude. So free. But Alolan Persian, I felt like, gave more support than anything else in Tier 4. The only other thing I considered Alolan Persian was Linoon. But, um, just, I wanted to support the team more as a whole. And I feel like Alolan Persian does that better than Linoon. Linoon's just a more of a kind of setup and win. And yes, I think less teams would have checks to Linoon. But, once again, Alolan Persian just helped out the team more. Like, I'm looking things in a massive picture, not just a few potential matchups. Because I have to take a one round at a time of a roster from three potential teams that a coach has had, and it's just a lot to take in. Lastly, we're looking at Tier 5. If you remember, in Round 3, I strictly drafted Meltank a little bit early, ended up getting sniped of something else. But I drafted Meltank strictly because it was on the board in Round 3, because I knew I could use this thing in playoffs. I didn't have the best Tier 5s at the moment, because I don't typically draft Tier 5s. I really try not to. If I can use my points for other things, I'm going to. So I use my free points pretty wisely to only get one Tier 5 per draft. Sometimes I get two just because I can't help it, because I wanted, like, say, another Tier 1 and another Tier 2. It just depends, really, on the draft. But I really only try to get one tier 5 if I have to. Um, because they're not that great. Like, there's very few steals. Um, not like typing, but you know, like point value for tier 5. But Meltank is one of the best tier 5s. And some leagues even put it in tier 4, but that ruins the value in my opinion. Putting it in tier 5 is just... It gives, like, light to the tier, which is nice. Um, so, Meltank, a million percent. Fat with thick fat gets sap sipper, which is still helpful, which was also why I was considering still swampert. Um, but you know, blasters for the removal, of course. Um, just being able to just eat almost any hit, just about. And getting melt drink is so nice, it gives me heal bell cleric to go along with aromatherapy in um, Floridus, as well as if I wanted to run it in Rosary. I believe Rosary does get aromatherapy. Um, typically, wouldn't run that though. And um, but the Cleric is just helpful, especially if it gets on Synchronized Mew and then they get Toxic themselves, then I can get rid of the Toxic with like Meltank later. Um, access to Yellow Color and Thunder Wave is so helpful. Um, even though it's kind of haxy, it can determine the game, which is very important. Um, it just does really good, and the potential of facing a Gengar, I have a check to that now in Meltank, which is... Um, whew, that's one less thing to worry about. <laughs> but Meltank just does... If you've used Meltank or if you've even seen it, you know it's just such a good value pick that I had to go with it. And lastly, Electrode, I just really valued an amazing speed tier as well as I still want an electric type. I'm getting access to dual screens. It's just still so helpful. Once again, a really fast taunt user. Um, I like Electrode. I throw it on a lot of drafts when I don't have an electric type still. Because if I don't have a um, an electric type after, like, below tier 3, like, I will skip tier 4 entirely. Apart from Raichu, if, like, if they force Raichu in tier 4 instead of tier 5. Raichu's a tier 5. Don't make it a tier 4. Um... I will only go Raichu or Electrode, typically Electrode, depending on the team, because I'll normally have a slot already filled to what Raichu does. Um, Electrode just gives me that really kind of absurd speed where you can run like Scarf on it and still do a lot of work, and uh, voice crack, but help you versus um, sweepers on the other team. Um, you get the dual screens, which is really, really strong, and once again, the taunt and everything. So I do love Electrode. The support with um, Aftermath is helpful too for some necessary chip and all the sort. Very solid Pokemon. You can even get the static for some cheese, potentially. But that is the roster. Please let me know what you think of the team down below. Um, don't know if I'm going to use different nicknames. I'll maybe. Because I do know that I use like some... Oh, no, that was a different drug. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> I may use the same nicknames from throughout the season. I might change it up. Um, if you have any special ideas, let me know down below. But there are a few Pokemon that I'm not going to change their nicknames for. <laughs> like, those are just my set ones, like Roku for Mega Charizard X and stuff like that. So, um, but let me know what you guys think. Um, in round one, we will we'll be facing Ultra Player, who surprisingly, not too surprising, because we do draft somewhat similarly, um, we have four of the same Pokemon that um, we're going to be prepping for. He has Lando T, Mew, Florges, and Miltank. 
Just to put it in perspective, he also could have had Mega Charizard X and Gengar. And I'm pretty sure there's a few other ones that we matched on that he just opted not to go with. Or, or that I opted not to go with. But um, he does have like... Um, well, I'm not going to spoil it anymore from the, those four picks. Go ahead and check out his um, draft analysis for the playoff season. As well as every other coach. And if you didn't check out the last battles for the regular season in Week 12, make sure to do that. Once again, I apologize for not having a battle. But there are plenty of coaches to where you can go and support and check out their last battle of the season. But... That being it, we're going to go into playoffs tough, and we're going to hopefully win round one, go into round two with our hopes up high, maybe make it to finals, maybe be a champion this season. I don't know. I'm going to just have to try it out. Maybe I want to do it. Maybe I won't. I'll see, man. But we got to kill it. You know what we do. All right, so that'll be it from the Charlie Charizards. I will see you guys in round one in playoffs. Bye.